Okay, the reading for this week is the next part in our series on uh, Chinese, classical Chinese civilization, culture, philosophy, and literature. And today we will be reading a poem to be sung to the tune of Full River Red, which is a poem by Yue Fei of the song Dynasty. And you will remember that the song Dynasty um, begins in 960, ends in 1279, and it's usually divided into, or it is divided into two major um, uh, sections or periods, the Northern Song Dynasty uh, from 960 to 1127, and the Southern Dynasty, which is the last 152 years of that period, 1127 to 1279. And uh, Yue Fei was born in 1103, died in 1142. He was an officer in the Northern Song Army, and he wrote this very famous poem that we'll be reading today. So here's uh, the worksheets that you have. I'll read the introduction from that. And again, this uh, excerpt or this poem is taken from uh, something different this time, a book called Chinese Civilization, a source book, which was edited by uh, Patricia Buckley Ebry. Second edition, uh, 1993. I'll put the uh, information to that book in the description below so you can purchase it and follow along there, as well as a, a link to the uh, worksheet, the worksheet, PDF worksheet that was uh, compiled by somebody at Columbia University. All right, introduction. In t 1127, the Northern Song Dynasty came to an end as the Jurchen Liao conquered northern China and drove the Song court south to the Yangtze Valley. Okay, the Song's court had to flee south, remember, uh, which is why we have the transition from the Northern Song Dynasty to the Southern uh, Song Dynasty, where they lost the north, basically. There, from the capital at Hangzhou, the Song court continued as the Southern Song, 1127 to 1279, as I mentioned uh, just a minute ago, to rule Southern China. The Southern Song Empire, Empire was an economically and culturally vibrant place, but the defeat at the hands of the non-Chinese Jurchen people up in the north and the loss of territory rankled them. So did the fact that the court was simply not strong enough to recover the lost territory. Yue Fei, 1103-1142, was an officer in the Northern Song Dynasty. When the Song retreated south in the face of Jing attacks, Yue Fei opposed the retreat. He continued, however, to serve the emperor, rising to the rank of general and engaging in battles with the Jing and in suppression of peasant uprisings. Yue Fei experienced success in his campaign, campaigns against the Jing in 1140, so just two years before his death. Uh, the southern Song Gaozong emperor and his advisors, however, sought to make peace with the Jing, which involved returning the northern territories that Yue Fei had just recaptured in his campaigns. Yue Fei and his allies stood in the way of the peace negotiations. Accordingly, Yue Fei was ordered to withdraw, which he did, declaring that, quote, the achievements of ten years have been dashed in a single day. Yue Fei was arrested on charges of plotting rebellion, charges that his defenders insisted were trumped up and executed in 1141 or 2. It says uh, above the date is given at uh, 1142. Here it says 1141. Uh, we'll check and see which of those is correct later. <coughs> Yue Fei wrote the following poem as a song to be sung to the tune of Full River Red. The Jing Kang period, to which he refers, is the last reign period of the Northern Song, the period in which the Northern Song were defeated by the Jurchen Jing and retreated to the south. Okay, so I'll provide, I'll, I'll fi find the uh, text to the original Chinese uh, version of this poem and provide that in your worksheet and in the uh, description to this video. So we can compare the English translation here to the um, original Chinese. It doesn't say who translated it, but. Um, We'll find that out later after we look at uh, Chinese Civilization, a source book. All right, poem to be sung to the tune of Full River Red by Yue Fei. My hair bristles in my helmet. Standing by the balcony, as the rain shower stops, I look up to the sky and loudly let heaven know the strength of my compassions. My accomplishments over 30 years are mere dust. I traveled 8,000 li, with the clouds and the moon, never taking time to rest, for a young man's hair grows white from despair. 
The humiliation of the Jing Kong period has not yet been wiped away. The indignation I feel as a subject has not yet been allayed. Let me drive off in a chariot to destroy their base at Helang Mountain. My ambition as a warrior is to satisfy my hunger with the flesh of the barbarians. Then, while enjoying a rest, slake my thirst with the blood of the tribesmen. Give me the chance to try again to recover our mountains and rivers, then report to the emperor. Okay, so he's asking for a chance to uh, recover the territories that were lost in the north uh, to the Jurchen peoples, whom he regards as barbarians here. Um, okay, so there are three questions on the study guide. We'll go over these in class. Question number one, how does Yue Fei's imagery of war compare to that of Tang, the Tang poets Li Bai? It says Li Bo here, but uh, the uh, contemporary Pinyang rendering is Li Bai. Um, Li Bai and Du Fu, the great uh, poets of the Tang period who also wrote several war, many uh, war poems that are very different in tone and themes uh, with this poem here. So let's compare Yue Fei's uh, sort of militant, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ko um, Diki in Japanese, I can't think of the English word, belligerent uh, tone here to, uh, we'll compare th this poem here with the um, war poems of Li Bai and Du Fu. Question number two. Does the author's image, as conveyed, conveyed in this poem, have anything to do with Confucian philosophy? Why or why not? So perhaps the uh, relation between subject and ruler is uh, referenced here in this poem. Um, there might be some Confucian idea behind that. We'll discuss that in class. And any other uh, Confucian ideas or themes that appear in this poem. Question number three. What image does the poet convey of Chinese male identity? What does this image of Chinese manhood compare to stereotypes? How does this image of Chinese manhood compare to stereotypes with which you might be familiar or with images of Chinese male identity expressed in other literature, such as the descriptions of Confucius in the Lung Yu, the Analects, for example? Is this an example of uh, what we might call today toxic ma masculinity? Um, and we'll discuss that in class later. All right, that's all for now. This is a short uh, assignment this week and a short video. And I will see you in class. Goodbye.